Welcome back. In the first video, we talked about an initiating zone on a, a conventional fire alarm panel and how, uh, you know, what would happen if a wire came open, if one of the wires came off of a device, uh, what happens in a normal state, how the current flows through the resistor, and we touched on what would happen if it went into alarm, if somebody pulled a pole station or set off a smoke detector. So it's an important concept. I don't think it's terribly difficult, but um, I'd like to brush up on it real quickly. So I drew the circuit a different way. I drew the initiating devices with switches in them. And let's assume this first device here is a pole station. This is pretty accurate for a pole station. It's essentially just a switch that would short if somebody went up and pulled it, kind of like a light switch would. Um, and let's, let's assume these are heat detectors. I don't want to call them smoke detectors because this isn't really exactly how smoke detectors work. Not exactly how heat detectors work either, but it is, is essentially a heat detector. It is two pieces of metal shorting together, so the switch idea is easy enough. So let's follow this path there. Just follow this current flow. You start on the negative side, and we start flowing. The current's going to go into where these wires are connected and back out, but it's not going to go through here because it's not touching, right? So then you go through the heat detector, same thing in and out, has nowhere else to go, and it's going to go through this resistor. So this is the end line resistor. It's going to go all the way to the end of the switch, you know, as far as the metal takes it, but it can't quite go anywhere else, so it goes back. Same for all these. If These switches, I think, are easy enough to see, but I just kind of drew it a little bit bigger out here. This is kind of the idea of the wires coming in and then being connected to the internal the connectors on the pull station, the terminals on the pull station, and back out. Okay, so um, that's easy enough. So what would happen if somebody pulled this pull station? Or let's do a heat detector. So now we draw this closed. And now what's the current going to do? Well, start at negative. It's going to go into this pull station and out and then it's going to go here now remember this 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 current is trying to get from the negative to the positive it's flowing through all the electrons in this wire and it's going to go actually that's probably not the right way to say that but we'll get more into that later it's going to take the path of least resistance right it's going to it's going to go in and out of this pulse station it's going to go through this heat detector back to positive it's essentially a dead short almost none of it's going to go through this resistor. I think now's a good time to just introduce what Ohm's law is. Um, because I have, I, I keep saying when, when something goes into alarm, the current goes up, right? Well, why does the current go up? Let's assume we have, well, first of all, let's introduce Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is very simple. It's usually written as like with this kind of little, I guess you could call it a cheat sheet. It's a pyramid. You'll have voltage over current and resistance and it's drawn these are kind of divided up into little sections on a pyramid and the idea is that if you know two of them you could you could find the other one so if, if you want to know what I is I is V over R or voltage divided by resistance I is current like I said before if you want to know resistance it's voltage divided by current if you want to know voltage it's current times resistance so that's easy enough. Let's say we have 24 volts here. And let's say our analine resistor is 6,000 ohms. It's a little omega sign for ohms. Sorry, I'm almost off the page there. Or 6K, 6 kilo ohms is how that's normally written. So let's say we wanted to find the current before this was an alarm. Let's assume this is not an alarm anymore. Well, let me cross this off real quick. So it's open. So now the current's going to flow through the resistor, right? So what? How much current's flowing? Well, let's see. Let's use let's use Ohm's law. We know we know the voltage. We know the resistance. So how do we find the current? Current is so I. Oops, I need to change colors. I equals V, which in this case is 24 volts over R, which is 6,000 ohms. I use nice whole numbers there just to make it easier, but we'll pull up the calculator because once you start getting into decimals, it can be tricky. Sorry, this is taking me a second here. Calculator. So we have 24 divided by 6,000. And that's 0 0.004 amps or 4 milliamps. 
All right. So I equals point zero zero four amps. And again, that's when that's when that none of these are an alarm. That's just the current through the resistor. Well, what happens when the shorts now? What happens if this heat detector goes off? Well, now the current's going to flow freely through this right back to the positive. And, you know, there's there's internal resistance in wires. It's not much. It's minimal. There's internal resistance in the heat detector. It's it's not, nothing's perfect. It's not a perfect conductor. It's not in a vacuum. So let's say the internal resistance of this heat detector is, I don't know, let's say it's 0.2 ohms. 0 0.2 ohms. Probably be a little higher that once you take all the wiring into, into consideration and but for our purposes, that'll work. So let's let's try to find the current now. It's pretty simple, right? 24. Well, what we, we're trying to find current again. So I equals voltage. We can look at our cheat sheet here. I, I equals voltage over resistance. So we're going to take 24 volts over 0 0.2 oops, ohms. Go back to our calculator. 24 divided by 0.2 equals 120 amps. So 120 amps is a huge amount of current. Your circuit breakers in your house are 20 amps and those rarely trip. So now this is a fire alarm panel. If this were just an unlimited power source, you know, theoretically, I guess it could get to 120 amps, but this, this is something that's designed to withstand a short. So your current's never going to get that high. But the idea that I'm trying to, the thing I'm trying to make you understand here or help you understand here is the effect that resistance has on current and the, the relationship between voltage and current and resistance. So we saw that when the resistance was very high, the 6,000 ohms, current was very low. When resistance went very low, 0.2 ohms, your current went very high, or at least it would if this were an unlimited power source. One of the things I wasn't sure I was going to really get into is what is voltage and what is current and what is resistance because it's, it's kind of a tricky thing to explain. And then I decided, you know what, I would like to explain it. So I started researching how to, you know, what the best way to, to explain it was. And it's, it's pretty tricky. Um, I may make some videos on it, but I found some that I think do a decent job. And this was something I wanted to mention anyway, because if you've ever been to this guy's website, you've, you've already noticed that my format is, I basically stole my idea from him. So um, the website is www.conacademy.org and um, he does videos just a kind of a quick background on him he was a he was a hedge fund analyst who had he has degrees from MIT he has degrees from he has an MBA from I think Harvard or some Ivy League school and he's he started teaching his cousins he was tutoring them over the internet by making YouTube videos. Well, other people started finding his YouTube videos and it caught on. And um, to make a long story short, he's now does that full time. He's made some videos on um, circuits. Maybe I could pull it up real quick. I should have had this up because this is going to be sloppy. But he's done some videos on circuits. And um, I think he does a fairly good job explaining the voltage and current. And he gets an Ohm's Law like I just did. So let me let me just pull it down. You have to be careful, though, because some of the stuff he goes into is very high level. So you have to go to, I should have pulled that over. Let me, give me one second. So I went to his website and then I go to watch right here. Oops. My internet's running slow. I think my daughter's watching a video. So watch science and physics. Once you're there, He's got these videos on, I would start with circuits part one. Some of this other stuff he starts introducing calculus and it's a little bit over, I think everybody's head. So circuits part one and then go, and go on from there. I, th I think he does a better job than I could explaining it. Yeah, if you're interested in that. If not, you know, if you're comfortable just thinking, well, okay, well, voltage is a potential difference. It's, you know, if you're just willing to accept that voltage and current and resistance exist, you know, that's fine. But if you're a technician, I would strongly encourage you to get as good of a handle on that as you can. That's where I want to stop for right now. Um, I'll see you in the next video.